I was conflicted, you know what I mean? Because I have the 76ers winning the Eastern Conference and playing for an NBA championship. But on this particular afternoon, 80 degrees and sunny in Chicago, I was rooting for the Raptors, and the Raptors played with a sense of urgency. Um, they had never won a game four when they fell behind 0-3 in the series. So showed some fight. Siakam with a playoff career high. He was outstanding. Great job of you know, mixing up his in-between game and driving to the basket. But I think the story was more, you know, as the old 76ers yawning through a game. Joel Embiid clearly was affected by the thumb in the first half. I thought he was much aggressive in the second half, played better in the second half, but missed some shots he normally makes. He was three of 10 in that first half. And give Nick Nurse and his staff credit. They have been through a ton of adversity in this series. Seems like everybody's getting injured. And right when you get Scotty Barnes back, well, Fred Van Bleek goes down in the second quarter. But they showed some fight. They showed some hot spa. And they take game four. But game five, that's going to be it in Philadelphia for the Raptors. But hey, let's enjoy this win, Canada. It's a win, all right? Yes. I'm surprised we didn't come in with you singing the national anthem as you have the last couple of days. So what does it mean for the Raptors? I mean, you call it the gentleman's sweep as they go back to Philly, possibly Philly getting that fourth win there. But what does it mean for the Raptors if they don't have Van Fleet available for that game? You know, it's interesting listening to Stan Van Gundy. You know, you've got to go with the philosophy of let's just get one. You know, and Stan Van was telling the story of Kevin Millar when the Red Sox made that dramatic 0-3 comeback against the Yankees of, don't give us one. You know what I mean? Don't give us one. So you try to win one game at a time. But, man, the two games in Philadelphia really have not been competitive. Now, if you're a Raptors fan, you'd be like, yo, Tim, we should have won game three. Could have won game three in this series. is knotted up at 2-2. But, you know, Philly's one of those teams that when things are going right, like, they're pretty hard to get in the way of. Uh, game three is going to end up being the game that woulda, coulda, shoulda it was for the Raptors. But, what an outstanding organization. They've had so much changeover over the last five years with the Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan. All right, well, that's not working. Let's bring in Kawhi Leonard. Great, we're on a title. We're excited. Kawhi Leonard's gone. And they're still really competitive. They do a great job of growing their talent. And Gary Trent Jr., another case of that, 24 points today, really stepped up in, uh, in uh, Fred Van Bleet's absence. And I remember Gary Trent Jr., working out before the Western Conference Finals of Blazers and Warriors because he wasn't going to get in the game for the Blazers. You know, he was sitting behind McCollum, sitting behind Lillard, but he has put in the work, had a career season where he averaged 18 points a game. Just another guy that Masai Ujiri has developed. Uh, they've had an outstanding year, but with all these injuries, you know, it's going to be too much for them to overcome. Well, and obviously Joel Embiid's going to be a concern for the 76ers. I, I mean, it would have been nice for them to get the sweep here because then you've got some rest because that Atlanta-Miami series is far from over. So then you get him, beat some rest. Now he's going to have to go and play at least another game. So what's your level of concern based on what you saw with the thumb injury? Yeah, I mean, the first half, you could see he got hit once. He had a open uh, like layup slash dunk, and he got blocked from behind. It just looked like the, the Sixers were kind of going through the motions out there. And, you know, they flipped the switch. It was one possession game in the fourth quarter, but... The Raptors were playing harder. I thought Philadelphia was sloppy. They had 16 turnovers. And did you see to the end of the game? Because I had just a small little wager on the total, which was 212. What was the final score? 212. But with 119 left in the game, Jeremy, it was only 201. So I'm watching the game and I'm going, all right, there's no way I could lose this game. I have under, okay, 201. Siv Mihailik, and I know I butchered that name, he fouled Shake Milton up 13 points after sh <laughs> the winning. There's no reason to be fouling. They inbound the ball, he fouled him. I was like, I, no, that had to be a mistake. Anyway, uh, the, the end of the game, if you want to talk about why gambling is completely nuts, watch the end of the Raptors 76ers game. Guys were falling down, hitting three-point plays, controversial out-of-bounds calls. That's the perfect example of how the modern-day sports broadcast is going to evolve. Yes, the game was not in doubt. The spread was not in doubt. But the storyline with the total, Jeremy, the last 119 of that game was completely <laughs> bonkers. Yes, it was a 213 and a half coming in this morning before the game. And then, of course, it dropped to 212. And 
We get it at 212 and you see the reaction from Tim. So let's spin it forward to game five here, Tim. What do you think in terms of a spread and what do you think in terms of a pick? Yeah, I think that the 76 would probably be seven, seven and a half. Uh, Scotty Barnes came off the bench, Shay, six points, 11 rebounds. The Raptors can win this game, okay? What are they going to have to do? Uh, they got a ton of open threes. Nick a Nurse was happy with the looks they were getting, just wasn't happy that they weren't converting at a you know, 45, 50% clip. If that happens on the road, they have a shot. You know, like Philadelphia is one of those teams that – you know, if you win the game in Philly, you know, they go back to Toronto, all of a sudden you can get inside of the 76ers head. So this is it. Talk about must win. You must win this game if you're Philadelphia coming home up 3-1 in the series. So uh, I think Toronto has a shot. No Van Vliet. We don't know how he's going to be after banging up that hip there in the second quarter, but they're going to have to play exceptionally well. More than likely one of the best games they played all year. So I see the 76ers being... Seven, seven and a half, eight, somewhere in that range. 76 is going to win the game. Are they going to cover the number? But Toronto could win. They're just going to need to have an exceptional shooting night. How good is our Tim Doyle? Tim, the number is eight as of right now. Way to go, buddy. What do you think? You think, I, you think that thing's not filled over there? You think that <laughs> thing's not filled? <laughs> Nice job, Tim. Uh, the line set at eight for that game five. And of course, as you mentioned, they get Scotty Barnes back, but they're losing Fred Van Vliet. We'll wait to see what happens in Van Vliet. And of course, there is concern about Joel Embiid and the shape of that thumb. He is CBS Sports basketball analyst, our wagering expert. Emphasis on expert, Tim Doyle. Thanks for hopping on with us, Tim. So game five in Philadelphia, Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then if the Raptors manage to win that, we're going back to Toronto Thursday for Game 6. And then if needed, a Game 7 will be in the city of brotherly love. Remember, no team in the NBA has overturned a 3-0 deficit in the playoffs. The Raptors looking to become the first to do that. But first, big Game 5 coming up on Monday do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.